Hello everyone, Harry Bulldock here, editor at Total Telecom. The world is currently in the grips of a semiconductor crisis, with demand for the latest chips simply too high for the industry to cope with, following the slump that came with the coronavirus pandemic. Experts suggest that the chip shortage will continue for many months, but governments and industry players are already taking action to meet the challenges head on. Today I'm joined by Hui He, Associate Director and Head of China Semiconductor Research at Omdia, to discuss the changes taking place in the semiconductor industry right now. Geopolitics and pandemic factors have increased the demand for global semiconductors over the past year. What do you think of the current status and development of the global semiconductor industry? Semiconductor is a very hot topic around the worldwide and lots of new demands booming up from last year. So that's why we can see even in the TSMC, the, the advanced and the biggest foundry of the world, their income at the hyperscale computing is already take about more than 30 percentage. So th this is a very big and uh, still uh, high speed growth market. Another one is that uh, a lot of um, end users, such kinds of the um, smartphone, you know that smartphones still be the uh, biggest uh, use consumption uh, segment of the semiconductor devices. Uh, a lot of the smartphone makers uh, order the components ahead uh, more than uh, more than before. Even they will um, order more about thirty or forty percentage than before because that they want to uh, keep the healthy supply chain and uh, to get the cost control. So that's why we can see a lot of uh, more and more order uh, go to the upstream um, uh, semiconductor upstream. But uh, you know that uh, semiconductor upstream, the, their capacity is, is limited and it's not easy to expand the capacity in a short time. So that's why we can see that the whole uh, uh, global semiconductor supply chain uh, in a very tight situation. And uh, I, we think that the tight steel situation uh, will continue about two or three years. Yeah. In the news, it was recently announced that the European Commissioner Thierry Breton is entering discussions with executives from Intel and TSMC about building chip fabs in Europe. Uh, overall, what is your opinion on the semiconductor investment plans for Europe and for the United States as well? Uh, in past years, uh, electronics industrial is a global industrial. And maybe uh, US has as once the design company, such kind of the NVIDIA, Qualcomm, and the Intel, or Intel is IDM. And uh, in Europe, they have advanced uh, material or equipment supplier. And uh, in Taiwan and some Asia companies, such kind of uh, Taiwan, Korea, or uh, they have the advanced uh, manufacturing, such kinds of Samsung or TSMC. And in Japan, uh, have some advanced uh, materials vendors and uh, some equipment vendors. And in China, China is, uh, is the biggest uh, uh, market of the semiconductor consumptions. So it's a global supply chain and the global industrials. But uh, due to the demand, semiconductor demand uh, increased a lot and some uncontrolled situations. So that's why we can see US want to pull back the semiconductor industrial in domestic and uh, Europe also wants want to build up the supply, semiconductor manufacturing supply. So that's why I think they want to introduce to Intel or TSMC to, to build up the fabs. <laughs> Yeah, in Europe, mainland. Mm, yeah, but uh, I think uh, for Europe, uh, no doubt they have some um, most advanced uh, equipment uh, vendors, such kind of SML and uh, some kinds of uh, material vendors. But uh, we know that uh, um, from the supply side is strong. But uh, if you produce the products, you need the market, right? We all know that the final market will be in the device end, such kind of smartphone, such kind of PC, tablet, or such kind of the some um, 
cloud or edge computing and the, and the, some kinds of the hot topics automotive. So all this request another uh, bunch of customers. But I think in past years, Europe uh, lack lack of such kinds of biggest uh, use end to to consume consume these components semiconductor components yeah so I think if they uh, Europe can build up the the foundries they have to find a way to to provide what kind of customers let's turn to the Chinese chip market now considering the current development of China's semiconductor industry. Can you tell us more about their production of 28 nanometer chips and why this is significant? Uh, indeed, that uh, the China local uh, foundries, such kind as such kinds of SMIC and other uh, foundries, already be read, uh, already has the technology ready for 28 nanometers for many years and already uh, went to mass production. And uh, but uh, from these years. China uh, domestic equipment and the materials uh, vendors are, are developing faster and faster and they are ready some uh, key equipment technology for the 28 nanometers. So as we estimate that by end of this year, China can build up a totally, uh, one totally self-sufficient 28 nanometers production line. You know that maybe some key equipment can be used local made. Yeah. And yeah, then I think by end of this year, some uh, small volume production can be ready and from ne next year's can go to some kinds of mass production. And uh, by, yeah, and uh, by 14 nanometers, I think some equipment is on developing as well. So I've heard that some key equipment can be ready by maybe by next end of next year. Uh, I think it's the end of by end of 2022. 20, so I think if if uh, goes smoothly, then the 20, the 40 nanometer self sufficient line can be ready and uh, and uh, go to mass production in two or three years. Yeah. Well, it's been really great to speak to you. Thank you very much for your time.